Hosea chapter 10 Israel is an empty vine no fruit no leaves it's to God they're empty they're not bringing nothing to God he bringing forth fruit unto himself so there is productivity coming but it's not for God a Christian has fruit the question is is your fruit for God and when you read the book of James and you find out faith and works when you're not producing any work for God then you can look at that person and question their faith what they're doing is they're doing everything they're doing they're doing what we've been studying now for 10 chapters and again this chapter is going to say it again they're doing it for God's and not God according uh, yeah according to the multitude of his fruit he has increased the altars all right we're talking about vine and in the Bible you assume to say it's grapes you know how many grapes are on a vine And with that it says, has increased the altars according to his fruit. You remember when we read about Judah? How they had altars and, and, and churches in every street? Israel had it first, long before Judah. There are altars or churches or places of worship in Israel all over the place. And none of them, none of them are for God, and none of them are approved of God. God told them in the law, and I'm going to speak as far as the law, after David and Solomon. There was one particular place you're to go at least three times a year, a must, commanded, and that place was Jerusalem, the temple. They are worshiping gods all over the place. If you want to see how many altars, get yourself, if possible, you would have to go to the library. The yellow pages of Los Angeles or San Diego. And check under churches, all denominations, and count them. That's a whole mess. I would assume with all the churches that are in Daytona, if you pick up the yellow page, you're maybe looking at two or three pages. I'm talking about all denominations, even the denominations that are not denominations. They're selfish. Isaiah 43, 23 to 25. They've increased their altars. Matthew 7, 16 to 20. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Romans chapter 1. They're making images of trees. They're making images of, of apples. They're making images of grapes. They're making images of the land. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jeremiah said that they're cutting down a tree and bringing it in and decking it. So when we read about Jeremiah, about a tree, I wonder what that could be. It's already being done in Israel. There's nothing new under the sun, Solomon says. Israel was involved in all these sins way before we were studying Judah. And you know what Judah did? They just continued. Even after Israel failed and went into captivity, as we've been reading. You know, when you read what the pastor, our pastor said the other day, you know, what's the first book in the Bible you read when you get saved? The book of Revelation. It's the last book. That's contrary to nature. You usually pick up chapter one, and you already read through. And it amazes me of the Revelation being the first book I've read, and all the times I've read Revelation, reading all the way through the Bible, studying Revelation, everything 
of have to do to study Revelation. It amazes me that Revelation records that men are angry with God and they don't get right with God. Their heart is divided. So what's the image you see when it comes to that verse? Don't you see a heart that's broken? A picture of a heart that's been split? Heartbroken? There, Hosea chapter 10 verse 2. The source of things that you do come out of the Bible, whether you believe it or not. I mean the Bible. Now shall they be found faulty. You know, when an electrician comes in your house and tells you your wires are faulty, that's not good. That can produce a fire. He shall break down their altars. I would assume God. Israel's not going to do it. He shall spoil their images. Well, see, altars and images. Where do you go into a church, you see an altar, and you see images? Aids to worship. And why did God say for these group of people who are his people, I'm going to destroy it, and I'm going to spoil it? If God approved of it, why don't you just say, okay, that's good, I like it, leave it. You know, they're violating the Ten Commandments. For now they shall say, we have no king. No king of Israel ever done right. They're going to have no more king. Because we feared not the Lord. Well, that's something you can't say presently as we're reading the Bible. Because there is a king in Israel. They're going to future. They're going to prophesy. Here is. One day we're going to say. You know what? We lost our king because of God. We were out of the will of God. That's why we lost our king. That's why we're not a government. What then should a king do to us? Proverbs 1 7 on that. What's good, what, what, what does it going to do if you get a Christian in the White House when 99.99.87% of Americans don't even believe in God and have no caring for the Bible? You think if you get a Christian in the White House, you think that's going to change things? Oh, set up, set up a dictatorship. Yeah, really. That, that's just that's just as worth saying. Say this prayer. You're just going to force people to get saved, and that's not salvation. Thou has spoken words. That's okay. Evidently, the words they're speaking are not right. Swearing falsely in making a covenant. Now, see, I think just. Saying bad words. In making a covenant, God explains to us through the Holy Spirit that, you know, oh, I'm going to pay this debt. And you don't. I'm going to marry this person to death do his part and then you get a divorce. I am going to dedicate this child to the Lord before all the church and later on the family drops out. God, if you get me out of this, I'll fill in the blanks. Jailhouse religion, uh, trench warfare religion. You shake hands at goods and, and you don't provide the need. Thus judgment springs up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. Now, furrows is where the plants grow. The field, you know, you Feel the grain, feel the wheat. Hemlock. You don't want somebody to go out in the field and start 
start picking hemlock and feed you. Hemlock's poison. So here's a field of poison because you've spoken words and swore falsely. You got to realize when you do dirty deeds by oaths, by swearing, you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and you lie all the way through. It's like you just go out and have a bowl of hemlock. The wages of sin is death. Numbers 31 through 16. The inhabitants of Samaria, that's the capital of Israel, shall fear because of the calves, plural, of Beth Haven. Well, there is a calf in Samaria. There's another calf. It's either Beersheba or Dan. I forget where. Here are calves are in Beth Haven. Wait a minute. You mean they made more? For the people thereof shall mourn over... Did you get our lesson in chapter 8? You need to go back and get the lesson 8. Chapter 8 of Hosea. That it. See, we're not done with it. Now, Hosea, 30 times the word it shows up. Four times 10, verse 5. 21 verses. 11% 11 of Hosea is dedicated to the word it. You're going to mourn over it. What? The cow. And the priest. God be of the calves. The dairy kings, I guess you would call them. Thereof that rejoice on it. It. For the glory thereof, because it is departed. From it. Well, the the because it that it reference the glory shall depart from it the calves. It 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 it. That's almost bad as I I I I. It <laughs> shall be also carried away unto Assyria for a present to King Jerob. <laughs> So you're telling me that you have a God. Now, now listen to me. Get this straight. You have this almighty, powerful God. Like the other day, we were watching a program. It's got some facts in it. And talking about this goddess statue. How it's got ten things where it can hear everybody in the ten worlds pray to it. It's all powerful that it can hear everybody at once. And it's got and it's sitting on a glass case getting ready to be sold for a thousand bucks, whatever it was. You're telling me you got this great God of Israel in Beth Haven. You know Beth means house. That is going to be carried to the enemy, to the Gentiles. That's a great God. That is like, uh, I think of his name now, Dagon. You would figure the Philistines, after the second time, found him falling down on the ground before the ark with his arms and legs cut off. You figure, you know what? That God needs to go in the garbage can. And countless, even Israel is recorded in the Bible, they go to war. And then they become victorious. And they go to spoil. And they find all these 
gods and relics and images all over the place. And they start picking them up and worshiping the gods of the fallen, of the losers. You you're now become a worshiper of a losing god. Really? Ephraim shall receive shame. You remember what we've been reading about Ephraim? Everything he's done so far, what we've read, Mr. Smith, you're going to get shame. I mean, you proclaim to be of Ephraim. I never said that. You did. So, you know, I got a question for Donnie. Would you like shame? Same question for Maria. Shame. Would you like to join our religion and with it you'll get shame? Oh yeah, sign me up. Where's the dotted line? And Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. Counsel of the fallen gods. As for Samaria. Samaria. Her king is cut off. As the foam upon the water. Now, little. You ever see the foam on the water? It breaks up into little pieces and floats off. What is it? What purpose is it? What's it do? What can you do with it? Can you walk on it? Can you make any good of it? When the wind blows, it just whew, goes right down the beach. The high places also of Avon. High places. You know, that's where they're trying to get to God by their, I mean, I was going to say spaceship, or something like that. You know, where they try to build that tower of Babel to, you know, a high tower to reach to God on their own merits. Steeples are high places. High rises are high places. Airplanes are high places. The only high place God is designed for anybody would be the ego. You know why you know God never intended you to climb a mountain? Because you need breathing apparatuses for some of them. Doesn't that tell you you don't belong there? The sin of Israel is the high places. The high places also in Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. God really likes his sin, doesn't he? Really proves of these aids of worship. The thorn and the thistle. We talked about that last night. This is what you don't want. You get me to start a garden, and you'll end up. I'll end up with a thorns and thistles. They come as a result of non-working, no knowledge, destitute, abandoned, shall come upon their altars. So if you ever seen again a house, a tractor, or something has been sitting in the field and just overgrown with weeds, that's going to be Israel's altars. No one's going to be there to take care of them. An old graveyard, an old section of a graveyard is a perfect illustration of 
It's not tidy. It's not clean. It, it's broken. It, it's and that semicolon or colon hard to tell is the second advent. No church age. You go from destitute altars to, and they shall say to the mountain, cover us. And to the hills, fall on us. Revelation 6.16, Luke 23.30. That's exactly what they say when the Lord Jesus Christ comes on his horseback. They're going to take all their idols and their dollies and their gods. They're going to throw them to the back. I guess it's batty. Because they don't want to be caught with their gods, with God coming. I guess they'll throw their magazines in the thing, too. That's the second advent act of the Lord Jesus Christ coming, catching man in their sin. And you know what? What are they afraid of? Why don't they just tell Jesus when he comes it's an aid to worship? Because they know it's not. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibla. Giba. There they stood. The battle of Giba. And I've got a reference here, Jude, uh, Judges chapter 20. Against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chasten them. God the Father. Well, you shouldn't punish children. God says do it. And the people shall be gathered against them. When they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. They're in the rut. It's a cut in the ground. You know, when the old fashioned wagon days, even with the car, you get your tires stuck in a rut, in a furrow, you're stuck. You're going to need help. You won't get out on your own, your own power. And Ephraim, Ephraim keeps showing up, is as a heifer that is taught. Known, has the ability, and loveth to tread out the corn. Well, Paul tells us, you know, you're to let let the heifer eat the corn while he's treading it out. So I was like, hey, I'm I'm just walking. Out. I don't know why I'm walking. I but mm, this tastes good. Let me do it all the time. The heifer doesn't even know what he's doing. To him, he's getting a free meal. To the man, they're getting the, they're getting the corn bruised so they can they can uh, uh, heave it into the wind and blow away the chaff. But that cow is yum 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 yum. But I passed over her. I pass I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Up front, Judah shall plow the work in control, and Jacob shall break his clods. It's a corporate work. I have here no heifer will fight, stubborn, they will rebel, and you got to remove the horns. So Ephraim will ride on the heifer as Judah plows, and Jacob being the plow. And it's spoken upon Jesus Christ as his back being like the furrow. The heart being as stone. A flinty heart, Israel's heart is, is like him too. You got to break up that ground to do something. 
And when the parable of the sower went out, they fell on some stony ground. You can't do much with stone. You gotta break the ground. You can't just go out somewhere and just start throwing seed around. Maybe you'll get lucky. Most of you won't. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. There you go. We're talking about seeds now. We're talking about the parable of the sower. Reap in mercy. You want mercy from God? You better have righteousness. You can't have iniquity. You can't have wickedness. And expect mercy. Break up your foul ground. Okay, so leaven was an, was an illustration. Israel as a corporate has to break their ground of idolatry, of adultery, of whoredoms. For it is time to seek the Lord. There's a time coming when Israel will seek God. Second Advent. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And that rain literally is, is, is the latter and uh, the latter rains. And every time when you, when you get into the second advent, you get that early and latter rain. What has happened in the seven year tribulation period? The waters turn to blood and the, the heavens have stopped. Thank you, Elijah. The locust kind of whatever they were are are eating all the crops. Like they did in Egypt. The whole world today is it's fascinated by water bottle. Well, yeah, I'll go down to the grocery store. I'll get me water bottles, during it, and then you find a bottle of blood. Ye have plowed wickedness. Opposite of verse twelve. You have reaped iniquity. Twelve and thirteen are just contra. People will question at the great white throne judgment, why are you doing this to me, God? Because you plowed in wickedness. Well, Lord, I went to church. Has God approved of the church services we've been studying so far, just in this book alone? Listen, cow worship is no different from Astrid and Mary and those other God worship. It's a worship of sex. Cow, milk, a mother feeding her calf, like the Madonna feeding her baby. As we're coming up to Easter, the, the, the uh, Eshteroth, which has all the boobies. You've seen her statue. What comes out of those, out of those breasts? The milk of life. What comes out of a cow? It's sex worship. That's all it is. You just put a different name on it. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. Did you know fruit? You know lies have fruit? Fruit flies. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Here, have a bowl of fruit lies. Because thou didst trust in thy way. Jesus said, I am the way. I'm going to pose Hosea 10, 13 with in mind. In the multitude of thy mighty men. Look how strong we are. Look at our army. Look at my muscles. See us. 
Look at how much we conquered. Look how much. We, yeah, Assyria is coming. You can have all the bullets you want, but if God's against you, therefore shall a tumult arise among thy people. Big trouble, big ooh, uproar, confusion, trouble. All thy fortresses shall be spoiled. That means an army's going to come and take what they want. As Shema spoiled Beth Arbel in the day of battle, because this army came in and went and got whatever they wanted out of this city. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. And this is an act of war. Is this sorry how soldiers will treat women? But the Jose is saying is, you know what, Israel? The army's coming. The enemy's coming. They're going to take what is yours. Where he said they're going to take your, your golden calf. They're going to deliver it to the king for a present. And they're going to take your women. And they're going to take your children. And they're going to kill them. They may even rape them before they do it. You know, it's funny with all the things, how much the Jewish people were hated. And you know what they did to some of the women before they killed them. I mean, you really hate them that you got to abuse them. Sometimes right in front of the husband. Sometimes right in front of the father. So shall Bethel, the house of God, we looked at a few Beth in here, that Bethel, the house of God, do unto you because of your great wicked, wicked uh, can't say it. You mean God doesn't prove this? He calls it a great wickedness, this religion? He calls it a great wickedness. One of them churches over in England, or not England, over in Europe, even professes as their relic to have a canister of Mary's breast milk. Why? What's it going to do for you? One church has uh, the head of John the Baptist as an infant. The other one has the head of John the Baptist as an adult. Talk about losing your head. So shall Bethel do unto you because of your great... It's sorry because, you know, I grew up in one of the most, besides Muslims, the hardest religions that, that people is Roman Catholicism. And there are people who think they're doing right. And if they could, they would kill God when, when God takes their pope and casts them off in the lake of fire. I preached on the street last week and didn't say nothing about Catholic, didn't say nothing about Mary worship all that. I was just preaching the gospel. Woman comes, oh, I'm a dedicated Roman Catholic and I love Mary. Really? All I said, Mary's commandment was whatever my son saying, do it. That didn't come out of my lips. That came out of Mary's lips. And God says it's great wickedness. In a morning shall the king of Israel, God even gives us the time. We know when the king of Israel is cut off. In the morning. How's that? And it does come to be, and it does happen. Prophetically, it's true. So as much as he was cut off, 
by the army, when it says the Lord is going to come, they're going to throw all their gods in the caves and cry to the mountains. Guess what? That hasn't happened yet. That means it's going to happen. Because everything else in the chapter has been fulfilled already. We have a God that's 100% all the time when it comes to prophecy. Rest assured. Israel did not get right. And Judah got worse and worse. And the same happened to her. And religions today, just like Israel and just like Judah, they won't repent. They won't get right. They, they see the judgment happen. And, and then they get cut off. And God has sent them a Bible and God has sent them warnings. 